As a family doctor, I see patients of all ages with sports injuries and repetitive use problems. I'm Dr. Tom Archie, and I'd like to introduce you to the Class 4 Cold Laser. I often combine laser with acupuncture and physical therapy to enhance the healing of sore tendons, ligaments, and joints. Research indicates the Class 4 Cold Laser may speed recovery from concussion as well. It's safe and innovative. Visit us at innerhealthmd.com or call 208-578-4550. Family medicine like it used to be, affordable, personal, and looking to the future. Eye on Sun Valley's Athlete of the Week is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Patrick Buchanan, agent. Sun Valley Associates is the key to your home, a tradition of excellence since 1962. Put our team to work for you. 208-622-4100. svassociates.com. I'm Michael David with High on Sun Valley Sports, and it's my honor to be joined by our Athlete of the Week, the Wood River Valley's own Lexi DuPont, adventure athlete, professional skier, artist, philanthropist. Should I go on <laughs> and on? Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for being with us, and congratulations. Thanks for having me. You were selected as Athlete of the Week based on your body of work as a professional skier. Um, but more specifically and recently with your work uh, around the global environmental issues that we all face. Um, we'll get to that a little bit, but let's talk about your athletic accomplishments. You grew up here on skis since about the time you could walk, right? Mm -hmm. uh, took the traditional alpine ski racing path, but then uh, chose to go and be an extreme big mountain skier. Tell us how a DuPont growing up in Sun Valley, Idaho, Olympic Championville, takes that path. Yeah, I mean, I was on the skis on skis as long as I could remember from the age of two. Right. And um, competed in racing through the community school and the Sun Valley ski team. And then um, once I reached the college level, I kind of segued into big mountain free skiing. Right. And right. did really well there. And I just knew that that was my niche and that's where I needed to be. And so I went on to compete on the Free Ride World Tour. And then that moved into filming with a lot of different companies and traveling the world to um, you know, places that have never been skied before and to find that untouched snow. Fantastic. Now, the extreme skiing has been, it kind of was dominated by men. It was, did you consciously think, okay, this is a sport the boys are doing and I wanna bust through that ridiculous monopoly they have on it, or did it, you just do I it? I mean, we, I grew up here having Lindsay Dyer and Peekaboo Street as my role models. Right. And so seeing that those two women had done it and then knowing that, you know, this valley kind of cultivates an environment where girls and boys are on the same playing field. Right. Um, so when I was ski racing, you know, every weekend we're on the road with all of the boys, and so it was just kind of habitual to be with the dudes. Right, right. And then going up into Alaska and being the only girl skiing up there for like six years before another female came up there. Wow. Um, I mean, you just, that's just what you're doing. It wasn't really I'm going to prove something for women it was more this is this is my path and right right well whether you whether you set out to do that or not <laughs> you, you, you kind of have and that's that's important I think. things and I think you then you reflect and you look around and you're like wow there really aren't any other girls doing this and a lot of them are paying attention and so let's kind of encourage them to join us and to participate as well that's awesome well uh, congrats on, on that um, tell us how you develop the nerve or again is it just in you I mean you how do you launch yourself off a mountain down a vertical cliff with a you know a film crew there to describe to us chickens that could never <laughs> do that how uh, what that's like yeah it takes a lot of practice for sure but I just remember I, mean, I get this question a lot and you know down at Magic Reservoir just south of town there's those cliffs and when I was younger, my dad would look at me and my three sisters and be like, you're jumping. <laughs> and our friends would be shaking in the boat, not wanting to get out. And me right. and my sisters would go up there and like huck backflips. And it was just from a young age, watching my older sister doing it and my younger sister. Right. Um, but yeah, when you're in Alaska, it's, it's really intense. Um, I'm actually up there with a fellow Sun Valley 
um, native, Reggie Chris right, and right. Zach Chris are my mentors. And so I'll be in the heli with Reggie and we'll have the doors off. You know, you're just hanging on the edge of a helicopter. And then he, you know, we go over a line a lot at the bottom. He knows exactly where I'm going. I know exactly where I'm going. Right. And then when you're dropped off on top of that mountain, you just kind of start reacting. There's that one moment before you get your skis on where you're like, oh my God, <laughs> what is going on? And then as soon as I click into my skis, this confidence comes over me that it's just, you know, where you're going. And right. But there is a lot of planning and preparation oh, so that goes much. into it that we don't, we don't see, right? A lifetime of preparation. Right, right. Yeah. Well, fantastic. You're not just a, a, a skier also, too. You're a, a surfer, mountain biker. Um, and there's another uh, kind of adventure that you've undertaken. You're becoming a pilot, too. Tell us a little bit about the other sports that you participate in. Yeah, I think, um, you know, skiing is just the winter. We go sometimes a few weeks um, in the summer months down south. But there's a lot of time where um, we're left to climb and mountain bike. And surfing is one of my really great new passions Very that I'm cool. obsessed with. It's so fun. And I think it's just, you know, there's that, that uh keyword flow state, but it's constantly chasing for that flow state. Right. And so now um, I've been studying to become a pilot, and that is kind of to represent my family's history. Um, my dad's been a pilot since he was in his teens. Out every single one of my family members on my dad's side, um, they all raced planes in high school, oh, wow. and a bunch of them were adventure pilots. Um, yeah, my grandfather was the first to land a plane in Borneo, and my dad's <laughs> uncle was the first to fly the Amazon. And so to hear about those stories growing up, I was like, I want to do that. Yeah. I want to relive their adventures and um, refly their their paths. That's so great. So, so this is like the new <laughs> the new chapter is flying. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's in your in your genes and mm -hmm. your your blood. Well, that, that that is so fun. We'll keep uh, keep watching you as you pursue those uh, dreams as well. You've been featured in numerous ski films over your career, uh, but it seems like your, uh, your documentary film career has taken a little turn towards um, environmental education of late. Tell us about the projects you're involved with right now. Yeah, so last fall, um, I was just really called to go to Standing Rock um, after seeing what was happening there and not really getting the proper news and everyone was kind of questioning you know, what's really going on. All we yeah. see are these messages on Facebook. So me and my younger sister and two of our other friends, Spencer Brendel and Spencer Cordovano, loaded in the back of my truck and just took off for North Dakota. Right. And we went there over the Thanksgiving holiday. And after seeing what was happening there and not having the proper news at all and realizing that this was happening in our own country and right. feeling that I was in like a third world country, I just it kind of took this entire change. I saw that I had an opportunity and a voice and people were listening to what I had to say. And so all of my projects this winter are directed towards water and wow. bringing an awareness towards the destruction and pollution of water. Wow. So it's a four part series called Water Worshippers. Um, the first episode what took place in Revelstoke, British Columbia. Second one was in Vancouver Island, <clears throat> kind of surfing and skiing, tracking these storms. Right, right. And then the third one was in Iceland. <clears throat> with this down to earth expedition where we linked up with 47 different schools to bring virtual climate change education to wow. um, elementary schools. Um, and then the fourth one, I just got back from Nicaragua where we were putting in w wells and water purification systems. Fantastic. Yeah, so, so it's you, kind of endless, so I'm like, wow, I could do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> right, right, right. Water you got, touches everyone. <laughs> you got plenty we, to do, right? <laughs> yeah. Plenty of work on your, uh, you've been all over the globe. You, you've traveled the globe, you've seen incredible places, uh, but you've chosen to come back here to, to the Sun Valley area and make it, make it your home. And, and you talk too about a lot of your peers are doing that. Why, why, why the Wood River Valley? I mean, this is such a special place. Um, after traveling all over, living in different ski towns, there's nothing that beats this community. Having the support, I mean, there's so many Olympic athletes that come out of this town and it's not only because their parents and their coaches but their teachers and there's such an amazing healing community. We right. have the PT that we need, we have the facilities, we have the snow, um, we have the amazing mountain. Um, but having the encouragement of a community, everyone having your back and being your greatest cheerleader, I mean, that's what I want my kids to experience. Right. First, I have to find a boyfriend. and <laughs> then, <laughs> First things first, right? First things first. <laughs> but I want to be able to raise my kids in this valley for sure. Right. Well, fantastic. I think it's a, it's a testament to, to, to you and your peers that you, you, you understand the, 
the importance of the environment and, and, and the, the world we live in and taking care of the planet. Do, we, do you have any advice for maybe some young people on how they can get involved and, and help us take better care of our planet? Yeah, I think we're in a really unique place being raised in the Wood River Valley, constantly exposed to the natural world. Right. And we kind of are witnesses to this climate change disaster that's upon us with shorter winters, stranger seasons, large wildfires. Right, right. Um, and so I think that that, you know, you see it, you see the evidence and acting on that in your everyday life from little things that you can do, you know, not eating meat, living in a smaller house, maybe traveling less. Right, right. Um, and then the larger things of networking. We have so many amazing minds in this community sure, sure. where we can collaborate to do larger things. Yep, yep. Well, and you were part of the, some of those amazing minds. You were a speaker at the Sun Valley Forum on Resilience that took place recently. Uh, congratulations, and that's, a, that's a, a testament again to you, to your work that you've done at, at such a young age. What was that like, being a part of that group uh, in your hometown? It was so cool. I mean, just to be able to learn from some of those people that were in town. Right, right. I think that was the greatest gift was to be able to sit in on those talks and hear what the greatest minds in technology and environmental studies are doing. Right, right. Um, and then to also have, you know, seeing that people are invested in the next generation, the millenniums, right, to. Right to take the, the lead and the charge in what we're doing. Sure, sure. And there, you know, there were some things that were a little bit frightening to, talked oh, about, yeah. but I, I got a sense that the, the biggest thing is the, the hope and the positive, uh, the positivity. Well, we have to. And that, um, I think, is one of the, the roles that I play in this community and in the environmental community right. is to instill that hope yeah. as this younger generation that's excited to um, take on these challenges. Um, we got a hit on what you mentioned at uh, your home. Yeah. So, uh, it's such a cool place that you live in. Tell Thanks. us about that. Yeah, I live in a tiny home, Outboard Ranch. It's a geodesic dome built in the 70s. It definitely has a lot of work that needs to go into right. it, but um, living simply with all that, you know, only the few things that you need right, right. Um, is what I'm just trying to instill on other people. We, there's, especially around this valley, there's so many big houses and there might only be three people living in <laughs> right, it. Right. And they have all of these rooms and they're just buying things to fill the room. and. Um, just realizing that that is a huge has a huge impact on our planet. It does. It does. Mm -hmm. And housing is a, is a big issue that we we face in our community and in in across the country too. So yeah. um, you're doing your part there. You may need to put a little addition on though once you get that <laughs> boyfriend and family though. Maybe maybe a, a, a separate dome for That's the kids. That's true. <laughs> well, uh, thanks so much for being with us and and congratulations and thanks for all the work that you're doing uh, ac across the globe too. Well, thanks for having me. My guest has been Lexi Dupont. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors for making this possible. Patrick Buchanan with State Farm Insurance, Sun Valley Associates, a tradition of excellence since 1962, and Dr. Tom Archie, InterHealth MD, family medicine the way it used to be. I'm Michael David with Ion Sun Valley Sports, keeping my eye on Wood River Valley Sports and Wood River Valley Renaissance Women <laughs> for you. Ion Sun Valley, daily local news from beautiful Sun Valley, Idaho.